All right, what is up and welcome back to the Build A Better You podcast. I'm your host, Austin Chan. And in today's episode, I speak with fellow friend and coach Ted Gorman or Ted Shreds uh, as known on YouTube, on Instagram. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and link his stuff in the description if you want to go ahead and give him a follow. He posts great content. But in today's episode, we specifically talk about his fitness journey and how he has struggled with you know constantly starving yourself and severely under eating to lose weight how he overcame that struggle uh we also talk about his experience with gym intimidation and his top recommendations if you are someone who's new to the gym and you get anxiety or you're nervous about going to the gym and you don't really feel comfortable in that setting how to really get over that and get more comfortable and eventually tell yourself that you can go in the gym and you have a place there uh, but yeah we and we also talk about our opinions on TikTok and social media in general. Uh, just a good little discussion there. Uh, both of us are creators on there, so it's just kind of another point of view, in a sense, from the both of us. Uh, we also talk about his top five underrated fat loss tips. He has a whole series on that, so I wanted to pick his brain and get his top five on that. And we also talk about how to manage your fitness over the holidays, whether you want to continue getting after your fat loss muscle building goals, or if you just want to take it easy. But yeah, this was a very fun episode. Uh, thank you, Ted, for coming on. It was a great discussion and hope to have you back soon. And uh, without further ado, let's get into this podcast. All right. What's going on, Teddy? What's going on, Austin? Glad to be here, man. Yeah, glad to have you. Uh, so yeah, what's been going on, dude? How are you doing? I'm doing well, man. Uh, what is it? What is the freaking Wednesday hump yeah, day? Wednesday hump day. Let's get it. Uh, skipped my workout this morning. Gonna get it in later today, hopefully. I uh, mm-hmm. got some sleep. Got some food in me. Feeling good. What's mm-hmm. the name of this podcast, man? Uh, build a better you. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude. Um, yeah, tell me what's going on. Like, where? I, I actually don't even know where you're from. <laughs> I'm from New York. Oh, okay. Yeah, Long Island, New York. You're from Canada, right? No, um, I'm in uh, <laughs> Vancouver, Washington. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, no, yeah, not. I'm not a Canadian dude. I'm a. <laughs> I don't even know why I thought that. Yeah, born and raised American. <laughs> All right, awesome. Same. Yeah. Oh, dude, how how's New York? Did you like always grow up there? Yeah, yeah, I've always lived here. It's good, man. It's um, right. It's December twenty second, so now the days are gonna start getting longer. Love that. Hated. Mm-hmm. I was getting um, darker at like 4 p.m. Terrible, so depressing. But mm-hmm. uh, get lighter, love that. But it's freezing now. Like I feel like the last two weeks it just really started getting cold. So mm-hmm. gotta start wearing a jacket, man. I love going to the gym in shorts. Hate going in sweatpants, man. I don't know why, but like obviously it's not as cold in the gym. But when you wear sweatpants, man, it gets so hot, and I hate working out when I'm uh, super hot. Obviously. Mm-hmm. Do you do you guys get all four seasons there? yeah yeah like they're pretty defined yeah last last winter though uh last year we didn't get like i think it snowed like three days or something and never stayed i love the snow so hopefully it gets more this year Mm -hmm. do you guys get a lot of snow typically uh i went to college upstate new york at st bonaventure it's got a lot of Mm -hmm. snow there there's always crazy amount of snow there but not so much here in long island okay yeah how about over in washington uh yeah here it's i i want to say it's kind of like the same what's that called like latitude yeah so it gets pretty cold here like right now it's like high 30s low 40s and uh yeah it's it's dark as fuck like i wake i woke yeah. up at like 7 30 this morning and i'm just like wow i want to go back to sleep <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. yeah dude so let's get into this podcast uh so yeah tell us a little bit uh, about your fitness journey and what kind of brought you to where you are today? Awesome, man. So I guess that um, Jeff asked me the sort of same thing on his podcast. So I'll try to give a kind of a different answer. But it started mm-hmm. when I was like 15 or 16. Um, uh, like I, I was always like a chubby kid in middle school, super uncomfortable with that, didn't like how I looked. And then I remember like the defining moment, as cliche as this is going to sound, is I saw the movie Fight Club. And I was like, holy shit, bro, like Brad Pitt, Jared Leto, Jared Leto, Edward Norton, they were absolutely shredded, um, looked great. And I was like, dude, I want to look like that, man. So from that day forward, I kind of did it. Like I started my uh, finished journey there. But um, obviously, like when, I, when anyone starts, mostly they're doing the wrong things. Like I was running miles every day on the beach, uh, 
unintentionally starving myself since I didn't know what calories were back then. Like mm -hmm. a, a day of eating for me in high school, uh, I was vegetarian. I would have like, or v yeah, can vegetarians eat eggs? I was eating eggs. So I'd have like eggs, yeah. a salad, but this is, this is the most fucked up part. So I, my salad would be like baby spinach, mm -hmm. cranberries, um, pecans, and I think that's it. No dressing. No protein, <laughs> no, no protein, no dressing. Yeah. But I thought that was just, I thought that was healthy, bro. But looking back, mm -hmm. that was like maybe 100, 200 calories. And then after, and then I'd work out maybe uh, after school and then have a, a protein shake and more eggs. Like, what mm -hmm. the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's where it all started, man. Um, mm -hmm. After that, uh, I played rugby in high school and in college. And then, my last year of college, I took off rugby and that's when I like finally realized I was taking my health for granted the entire time. Like I didn't realize how easy it was to um, like, cause I didn't uh, fully grasp the concept of calories or like edu educate myself on it until after college because mm -hmm. I got fat, bro. After I stopped yeah. working out for almost two years after I stopped playing rugby and just continued those eating habits of eating a lot of food, but then my activity level went absolutely into the ground so i gained a bunch of fat got up to like 180 um mm -hmm. whereas i was 160 while i was playing rugby and then i was like holy shit i need to do something about this so then got educated on calories and then properly ate in a calorie deficit for i think it was um six or nine months got down to 140 which is way mm -hmm. too skinny for me um but then it's been uphill ever since i stopped doing all, all the unsustainable things i was doing and actually took some time and actually researched how to do it properly Mm -hmm. uh when would who would you say like were your like early influences oh man definitely uh this guy named joe delaney he's a youtuber mm -hmm. you know him yeah yeah i've heard yeah. of him yeah um early influences um it wasn't ziz i, I didn't yeah. find out i found out about him like yeah ziz, I, ziz was way back yeah i didn't find yeah. out about him till like 2020 actually but um what's his name bro it's like this huge bodybuilder guy fuck it i i don't know what his name was but i remember the program that was free on bodybuilding.com i remember following it it was called like big man mm. on campus <laughs> yeah <laughs> so that guy man but that's when i was getting a bunch of shit information like the shit they post on bodybuilding.com articles like honestly mm -hmm. they're not that helpful yeah do you remember what year that was yeah that was like 2017 18 okay yeah yeah that was like when information was shit like <laughs> yeah but those were definitely my early earliest influences is bodybuilding.com uh articles and those big uh bodybuilders on that website and then joe delaney for sure mm -hmm. yeah i honestly think like the fitness landscape if that's what you want to call it like has evolved so much over the years like 100%. i start yeah like i started when i was 13 and that was back in was that like 2010 yeah, around there, like 2010, like that was when everything was complete shit. <laughs> yeah. Like literally everywhere you went was just like, like I remember like anabolic window and like stuff yeah, like yeah. that that I would believe. <laughs> there wasn't any people putting out quality information on the internet that right? like TikTok mm -hmm. wasn't a thing. Uh, I didn't, I didn't mm -hmm. use Instagram back then. Or if I did, it was to look at like pictures of my friends, like fucking messy floor that they were posting. Uh -huh. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah and i remember like youtube too like it was literally just, people just posted funny videos and yeah. just uploaded whatever they want it wasn't like this like cinematic experience that you see now right now now there's 12 13 14 year old kids not that they should be seeking out this information but they're in our comment section saying how many calories mm -hmm. they lose weight like they're already learning about this which is great but mm -hmm. at the same time also not that great yeah um, yeah that's one of the things i see yeah like you said all over my comment section it's just like 13 year olds asking like how do I lose weight how do I get rid of this belly fat it's like <laughs> it's like I want to help you but at the same time like yeah. you should not be worrying about these things yeah I can't like morally or ethically do it mm -hmm. yeah and it's like also I can kind of really like back then I remember back then thinking like I needed to lose belly fat and it just wasn't a healthy mindset for me yeah mm -hmm. yeah so uh how how's TikTok been treating you Honestly, TikTok's been my worst performing platform out of, um, I mainly focus just on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok, and TikTok's been my worst performing one for sure, man. Mm -hmm. um, the beginning of 2021, it absolutely blew up. Um, 
got about uh, from November 2020 till like I'd say June 2021, I went up to 30k followers. But then from there, I've gone only uh, like 8,000 followers, which is still not terrible. But mm-hmm. my uh, most famous, it's actually hilarious. I'd, I, I'd love to talk about this. Yeah. So I posted, I did an experiment, right? So I'm, I'm post like one to three videos a day on TikTok. And I've been doing that for the past year. One a day is super easy. Like these are like 10 second videos sometimes. But I, I did like a, a challenge to myself like two or three weeks ago, how many TikToks can I actually post in a day? Mm-hmm. So I just spent the entire day posting TikTok videos and tried to make them decent. And I posted 15. I got 15 decent videos posted that day. And literally every single one was fitness related except for one. Mm-hmm. And that one is at 6 million views right now. Oh my God. Which one was it? It was me showing my fucking body wash. Oh yeah. <laughs> I saw that. That's, that's so there crazy. was this girl who said, um, biggest red flag I found in this guy's shower and it was a five in one body wash and I just stitched mm-hmm. it and I was like that's rookie numbers check out my body wash which is 18 and one <laughs> blew up yeah dude tick tiktok is a crazy place like it yeah it's insane to me like that's yeah like the the videos I put the most effort in I'm like I'm gonna do the most research I'm gonna educate the people as much as I can and then it's like not that many views and then I remember a while back I did some stupid ass video it was just me like hey, drink this to burn belly fat. And it was me throwing a bunch of like random spices in my cabinet into a cup of water. And at the end, I'm like, and dump this shit out because it doesn't work. And then that got like 500,000 views. I'm like, (laughs) wow. I I literally spent like five minutes total making that. (laughs) I think uh, like the um, entertainment portion of TikTok is really important. Mm -hmm. That's not something I'm I'm too good at of mixing them with the entertain or education part. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, how, dude, how's YouTube been going for you? Good, dude. YouTube's YouTube and Instagram have been my best performing. I mean, I got um six over six thousand subscribers on YouTube just this year. Okay. Crazy. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I love yeah. it too. Mm-hmm. Getting that long form content. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you find the how, how's the editing process for you? Uh, I use Final Cut Pro, but at mm-hmm. the start, man, I remember it was I would schedule like fucking six hours and just sit down and do it but then obviously just like anything else but you get more and more reps and now it's nothing i just drag it in and start editing mm-hmm. it's second nature now mm-hmm. but if i was tr- gonna try to learn like a new fucking type of editing process or like trying to spice things up i it would go right back to that process mm-hmm. gotcha cool so um what does your training and nutrition look like now right now yeah. as you know i'm in the paul carter training group because mm-hmm. uh if, for any listeners right now yes personal trainers do have coaches or um in our case they hire like uh what is what would that be called the training group yeah just like group programming i think yeah like the best All way to describe it. Us our programming every uh mesocycle so it's like sometimes four weeks sometimes eight weeks sometimes 12 weeks Mm-hmm. And it's just easy because so, just like um, how we program for you, right, right it's uh, not sometimes optimal, but you just take away the guesswork. You get a program, you go do it, and you mm-hmm. progress based on how they tell you to progress. So I love doing it like that. So um, And I love Paul Carter's way of programming. Honestly, I don't like high volume stuff. I like high intensity, low volume. Um, but mm-hmm. as you said, as we, me and Austin talked through DMs, those thir- we're doing some 30 rep sets or yeah. 20, 20 rep sets. And holy shit, that has been tough this week, man. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not looking forward to later on in the Minnesota cycle. I'm kind At of least dreading only three it. days a week, though. It is three days yeah. a week, mm-hmm. and it's only six weeks long. So I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm almost there. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then nutrition-wise, I'm in a deficit that I started uh, like October 10th, and mm-hmm. I'm going to end it uh, January 6th, I think. And I'm down actually 12 pounds on average, it's going real well. Okay, getting the shreds back. Yeah yeah <laughs> um but besides that i think that covers my training and nutrition mm-hmm. yeah and then i kind of want to go back on your point about like like hiring a coach or hiring a trainer because i think a lot of people have this misconception that like we like don't do much <laughs> like they just they just hire us and then yeah somehow that like you know it just doesn't really do anything but i think like honestly the biggest part is just it takes away so much of the guesswork because even for me who like, I I would say I have a fair understanding of like what I'm doing in terms of training and nutrition, just Absolutely. having someone to tell you exactly what to do 
you just go into the gym with the plan and that's just yeah that's the biggest benefit for me like i don't Absolutely. have to think about like my own program i can just like yeah just go in do the work and i can focus my attention and everything like my efforts towards like like servicing my clients and like doing my job absolutely bro i 100 mm. agree with you there man like yeah. I, I don't have to spend any time thinking about my own training i just pull out my phone literally as i'm walking in the gym door look what i'm doing that day look what i did last week try to go harder or do more reps do more weight that's it mm -hmm. i love it i agree yeah mm. and it keeps what? it fun too man it keeps it fun yeah. because you you don't know what you're doing uh necessarily in the next month like mm -hmm. As it were, if you were taking care of it on your own, you would, you'd plan that out. Yeah, exactly. And especially well, like when you have a coach who knows what they're doing, it's like you, you trust them to do it and you know, this stuff is working. Absolutely. Yeah. So what, what did your training look like before Yoke Squad? Before Yoke Squad, I would do, I was doing my own programming and then, mm -hmm. um, I exactly that I was getting bored of doing my own programming wanted to change it up and i saw the ad on his uh instagram stories and i was like let's do it mm -hmm. yeah were you always like into like hypertrophy training yeah I've, I've never been ever been into strength training okay. i just it i think it's like um have to do with uh i had a um a pinch sciatic nerve in my freshman year of college and mm -hmm. that really just like made me look like hypersensitive about my like lower back and stuff but even before I did that, like that was from playing rugby. But before that, I was still just doing bro splits in the gym. But I would always skip chest day to hit legs twice a week mm -hmm. <laughs> um, because I was self-conscious about not being able to bench 135, by the way. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, 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 I've always been in a hyper hypertrophy training and uh, don't care much mm -hmm. about strength mm -hmm. gotcha. because, because my goals stem from just aesthetic based goals. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah. So yeah, personally for me, like my, my goals were like always like aesthetic based as well, but I kind of went down that rabbit hole of like, oh, you got to do the big three to like get the results and everything. And then oh, I went yeah. down that rabbit hole and like, I mean, I got good results, but I also beat up my body in the process and I didn't get the like optimal results I wanted. I always felt like there was something lacking. Bro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I definitely thought you had to bench to grow your chest in the beginning as well. Mm-hmm. And that just like recently started, I mean, um, you're on TikTok, so you know, all the hype yeah. around like, uh, J the JPG hype and stuff. Oh now. yeah. Mm -hmm. All those people should also follow Paul Carter. Yeah. Yeah. He mm -hmm. posts really good content as well on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's like, I know TikTok is, has its good and bad. It's like, <laughs> like Dude, it's he, great. He is good though. He like, oh yeah. Content, but, uh, it's crazy mm -hmm. how many videos like on my for you page are about him. Mm -hmm. good to see though it's good to see that uh um optimal or like um mechanic and form driven content is being become mainstream now rather mm -hmm. than a squat bench deadlift yeah yeah definitely and it's like it there's still a lot of shit out there honestly <laughs> like i wish we could just dispel all of the stuff but let's like it it's crazy just how much more shit there is than like good stuff absolutely mm-hmm how about you right now with your uh, nutrition? I know your training, but how about nutrition? So I'm like just maintaining right now in probably in like a slight surplus. Like I don't really track anymore. I'm just intuitively eating in a sense. That's nice. <laughs> yeah. I'm just maintaining uh, it, although with like my quote unquote, like cheat meals or just my meals that I enjoy myself, they're a little bit higher calories. So I would say they're kind of in a surplus. Yeah. Mm. That's nice. Yeah. That's the like, last. Mm -hmm. but yeah the the gains are coming like i'm getting stronger like every week every month so yeah oh yeah man things are going really well mm -hmm. cool so um i noticed you have a little series on your tiktok uh underrated fat loss tips and you're uh, like 20 or 30 now oh am i bro I, I yeah, even... I don't know. <laughs> just, yeah i just see him all the time so i'm like oh wow he's he's up to a lot <laughs> yeah so what would you say are your top five underrated oh, fat loss tips put me on the spot i'll try to i'll try to name five but um yeah honestly man the a couple that i've gotten from jordan side of course right mm -hmm. me and uh, austin are both in a group coaching mentorship with jordan side and mike conti susan Ebergall, and holy shit i'm forgetting that uh last woman's name oh, but kim kim schlag 
Yes, exactly. Yeah. But uh, Jordan, I'm sure some of the listeners know who that is. Jordan Side on Instagram or Side Fitness on Instagram. Two of the tips from him, which are eating a big ass salad every day. That's a huge uh, mm-hmm. fat loss tip if you're dealing with any type of hunger and a deficit. Uh, number two would be also from Jordan is a consistency calendar. If you were ever into playing video games as a kid or like in high school or college, it's like another type of game that you could play with yourself, right? Every like, what's right here. I don't know if you mm-hmm. record these or not, but I'm sure you've tried a consistency calendar. Have you? Uh, I have I have not like, but um, personally for me, like I'm just so like obsessed with fitness that I'm like, I got to okay. do this every single day. But like, I can understand that like there are some days like you just don't want to do it and it can help a lot. Oh, absolutely, man. Mm. Um, it's like racking up. I was addicted to World of Warcraft in college. I uh-huh. haven't played a video game since, but bro, I was so addicted to World of Warcraft. Do you know what that mm. game is? Yeah. Yeah. I never really got into it, but I've had a lot of friends who like did. Yeah, bro. I was yeah. <laughs> the biggest nerd for World of Warcraft. But um, so I kind of think of it as like a little game that I play, like racking up green checks for consistent days and then uh, red X's for the bad days. But that's mm-hmm. it's super helpful. Um, give it a try if you haven't uh, already to the listeners out there. But then, mm-hmm. holy shit, put me on the spot. Two, three, three more. Let's go. Yeah, um, three more. Definitely to if you're on if you're eating under like 0.7 grams of protein times your goal body weight, definitely start increasing your protein because that's going to be the most satisfying macronutrient that you can eat. So definitely increasing your protein is going to help if you're not eating around that minimum. But mm-hmm. let's see. Hmm. ah sleep bro holy shit mm-hmm. if you're under sleeping man that definitely uh what is it ghrelin goes up your hunger hormone and your satiety hormone leptin will go down if you are uh under sleeping so it's getting six to nine hours of sleep every night and setting a sleep schedule and making that part of your routine super helpful for a fat loss phase or a surplus phase whatever mm-hmm. but especially important for fat loss yeah um, and, and i would even add like people don't realize like how like stressed out you get when yeah. you don't sleep and a lot of people i know who they, they deal with stress eating they get stressed and then they eat and then that's more calories in <laughs> and you're not in a calorie deficit absolutely mm-hmm. mental fatigue like just feeling also like um like i'm fucking tired like i don't want to mm-hmm. cook i don't want to eat this shit i'm just gonna go to mcdonald's or something mm-hmm. i'm trying to think of the last one now let's see All right, so we are going to take a quick intermission and just want to say thank you so much for listening to this podcast and thank you so much for making it this far in this episode. And I want to take a quick break and introduce you to today's sponsor of the podcast, Legion Supplements. So first off, a few reasons why I decided to work with Legion. Legion really does take a 100% transparent and no BS approach to introducing its supplements. Rather than simply trying to sell you supplements under the notion of trust me, bro, they actually aim to educate you about their products. If you go to their website, under every single product on their website, they list every single ingredient with their exact dosages, which means no proprietary blends, why they have chosen those specific ingredients and those specific dosages, and even the most up-to-date research to back everything up that they are claiming and saying. Legion's main priority is providing quality service and products. They believe in their service and products so much that if for any reason you're not satisfied, you can send them an email, fill out their form, and they will give you a full refund on the spot, no questions asked. And it's for these reasons alone why I think they are the best of the best and why I have continued taking their products year after year and why I've decided to work with them after they reached out. So yeah, they are just an awesome company all around. And if you're already taking supplements anyway, you're probably likely taking a multivitamin, fish oil, some sort of whey protein in some form. You likely want the best for your body. And I truly believe Legion is the best of the best. So go ahead and check out their products. They're such an awesome company. Um, Yeah, be sure to use my discount code AC at checkout to save yourself 20% off your first order. And I'll leave the link to their website in the show notes below. But yeah, thank you so much for your support. Thank you for listening. And let's get back to this episode. Uh, Walking, definitely. If you're not doing any cardio, walking. Mm Because it's not not about uh, like obviously people who are trying to lose fat don't give a fuck really about the sustainable habit even though it will become one and or maybe they do but Mm -hmm. right now you're probably thinking how can i burn more calories right just think about the entire 
accumulation of all the calories you're going to burn from walking for just 30 minutes a day during a three to six month fat loss phase. That's going to be a fuck ton of calories burned, but also mm-hmm. obviously it's good for your physical, mental health, your cardiovascular health. Super good for that as well. Mm-hmm. But wow, I got five. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Off my head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like on, on that same point with walking, like, yeah, people don't think it's exercise for some reason. And like this, like, they feel like they have to be like beating themselves up or like their heart rate has to be like super high in order to like get all like the fat burning benefits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely do walking. If you, if you're trying to do running and you hate it, if you're trying to do Mm -hmm. hit classes or like boot camps at 45 orange theory and you fucking hate it and you're tired of it, switch it out for a 30 minute walk every day. Change your Mm -hmm. life. Yeah. So what would you say is like the, I would say the top three, struggles that your clients like come in with definitely all nutrition like i don't have one client who has a problem going to the gym three to four times per week um sometimes they have they admit to me that they don't track every workout or every exercise or they Mm -hmm. skip some exercises but they still get it in that's all that matters um but nutrition for sure man like people um people greatly underestimate how consistent they have to be and how meticulous they have to be to get decent results in a decent time frame, right? And mm-hmm. if they come in, like I try to set them up for um, bad expectations from the start. Like I, I tell them from the start, like this is not going to be easy. Like you're going to think, like you're going to think you're going to make great progress, but if you're not putting in the results, you're going to be super disappointed. But I, th- I think nutrition and thinking that you can be more flexible than you can, or you don't have to track everything. That's a big wake up call that I uh, get from like, clients in week two one or two and three definitely is nutrition i mean i bet you're the same right most people definitely struggle with nutrition yeah yeah yeah, a lot of people struggle with nutrition, especially the like accountability part like a lot of people were like yeah you know i'm pretty consistent and then we'll like do the consistency calendar thing and they're like holy shit that's a lot of like x's that i didn't do (laughs) yeah yeah um trying to think of like a big one I kind of just umbrellaed it by saying nutrition and consistency. Mm-hmm. I'd say sometimes they don't. Um, I get, I get a lot of clients. Like I make weigh-ins uh, absolutely mandatory. Like if you're working with me, you have to weigh in. But I do make measurements and um, biweekly photos uh, optional. But I think if you're not taking measurements and you're not taking photos, and you're only doing weight, uh, I mean, scale weight, you're going to be, there's going to be some weeks where you may have, you, you're missing out on some motivation of seeing like one or two inches fly off your midsection, right? That can be mm-hmm. huge confidence and self-esteem booster. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you say to the people who are like, oh, I only weigh in once a week because like, you know, I don't want to like get obsessed and weigh myself too much. I tell them, if they tell me that over the phone, I tell them I only work with people who track, who will track their food with me for at least 30 days on a food scale in my fitness pal. Mm -hmm. Um, like if you want to sign up to work with me, I'm not going to just, uh, you have to start weighing in and you have to start tracking your food from the start and we can move on to something after that, but you have to at least give me 30 days to try that. Mm -hmm. So if someone said to me, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm saying, okay, I'll, I'll, um, I can resort you to another coach. I know a lot of coaches in my Mm -hmm. community. I'm sure they might be willing to take a consult call with you at least. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. Cause um, I've had a few people who like, don't really don't want to like weigh themselves. And I usually tell them that's like, uh, we, we usually get to the like, like problem of like why they don't want to step on the scale. And it's like, they, t- they say that they don't want to get too obsessed. And sometimes, you know, and I'm sure you deal with this, like people who get emotionally attached to that number. Yeah. And I just tell them like, dude, it's literally just a number on a piece of plastic. Like it has no meaning. It's just data. And um, like, honestly, sometimes the best way to deal with things is exposure therapy. Absolutely. Like the more you see that, hey, the numbers aren't going to be the same number every single day. You're not going to be constantly dropping every single day. The more they get used to that, like seeing the fluctuations and then they're going to be like, hey, it's actually not that big of a deal and it's when you couple that with measurements and progress pictures and you see everything go in the in the right direction sort of makes everything better 100 percent, man i think that you put it the best way 
you definitely have to take uncomfortable steps if you want to be successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, what would you say are the top training mistakes that you made in your fitness journey? All right, definitely. Um, I know a lot of people will relate to this as well, is letting your insecurity dictate whether or not you go to the gym in the first place. Like I, That's actually one that I could answer to the other question. I have a few clients who are too insecure to go work out at the gym right now. They want me to, they, I program them home workouts and they have very minimal equipment, but they're just too insecure to go to the gym right now. Mm -hmm. That was also me when I first started out. And that's why I skipped chest day every single week and never hit mm -hmm. chest ever mm -hmm. because I was too insecure to bench 135 for like three reps. Um, mm -hmm. So big training mistake of mine was just being too insecure to think I didn't have a place at the gym where mm -hmm. people where everybody, if you have a membership, you have a place there at any machine for any amount of time. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, well, I don't know about that last one, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then for, uh, for whoever's listening, like who's struggle with kind of, uh, I like to call it gym intimidation, what would you say yeah. is like the, the best kind of like thought process or like ways to deal with that? I mean, the best way to deal with it for sure is to have a program. Like when I, I, I can look back on that and I didn't have a program at that time. I, I just did bro split and did whatever I was feeling on that day for as many reps as weight as whatever I thought, never wrote it down, never anything. So have a structured plan, even if it's a free one you find online, just follow that shit. Um, mm -hmm. so you confidently know before you walk in the door, I'm doing this, 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 and this day. But also just realizing like, like I guess um, no one's judging you. No one really gives a fuck about you. Mm -hmm. that can help because they don't they yeah. really don't care unless unless you're that like honestly this might be a hot take but like unless you're like mm -hmm. that gym shark gym shark girl in the tight ass leggings and the booty shorts or you're that guy in the stringer and i don't know the gray sweatpants let's do that mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> you're doing that maybe the people are gonna look at you but they're still not gonna give a fuck they're just gonna be like oh look at that person mm -hmm. you know yeah. Yeah. One of the funniest things I found, like the people who you typically get intimidated by, like the, you know, like the big scary guys at the gym or like the super fit chick at the gym. It's like, they're usually the, like the nicest people because yeah. they're there for the reason of like improving their fitness and health. Like they don't pay attention to other people. Definitely. It's 100%. often the people who aren't serious. Those are like, ironically, the people who like judge others the most. I rarely even look at other people in the gym, mm -hmm. honestly. Yeah, same. If like, I do, I'm just, like, I'm like too zoned into my own workout. I'm like, oh wow, that dude is absolutely like Jack. That dude looks great. That girl looks hot. Like that's it mm -hmm. for a couple seconds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like I think yeah, at, at the end of the day, it's like ultimately a confidence issue, and like you really have to dive into like the reasons why you're not feeling confident. And like you said, like I think having a plan is such a huge step towards that because. When you have a plan, you go in and you know exactly what machine to go to. You know exactly how many sets, how many reps you're doing. And so that gives you so much confidence because you go in there, you have a plan versus then you just go in there, you kind of free ball it. 100%. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, what about top nutrition mistakes you've made? Oh my God, man. I mean, we spoke about this a little bit in the beginning, but like... Uh -huh. I can't believe I used to eat probably under 1200 calories in high school accidentally. Like I didn't even mean, I didn't know what calories were. So mm -hmm. top mis nutrition mistakes is thinking that you, that I had to eat super healthy, clean, um, and drink protein shakes right after my workout, um, or trying to be a vegetarian. What the fuck? I don't know why I did mm -hmm. that. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely my top nutritional mistake. nutrition mistake. Trying to eat super clean, trying to um, under eat a lot accidentally though. So not being educated and um, I, I guess that's an anabolic window mm -hmm. for sure. Oh, yeah. and then in college, man, thinking I had to meal prep every meal. Holy mm -hmm. shit. I tried to do that for like a month and I would never eat the meals. <laughs> <laughs> What were they? Were they like chicken, broccoli, and rice? Chicken, broccoli, rice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah in Tupperware, in the fridge, never. Oh my God. Them. Six meals a day, too. <laughs> no, I think it was like four. No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like that actually throws me back. Like, yeah, back when I started, that was this when I was like 14 or 15. I had this friend who was like super jacked and like he obviously knew what he was doing. 
And he followed that bodybuilding plan of like chicken, broccoli, and rice. And one time he brought me one of his meals and I'm like, dude, this tastes like shit. (laughs) This chicken tastes like cardboard. The broccoli has like no salt. And then the rice is just rice. (laughs) I can't even eat that now. Like I will never eat that meal. I mean, Mm -hmm. just mix it up. Like I can eat that. I can eat chicken, rice, and broccoli. If I take the rice, put soy sauce in it, and then mix Mm -hmm. If this chicken is seasoned and then mix that in and eat it like that, that's delicious. But I'll never eat bland chicken, plain rice, and fucking broccoli. Ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like right now, like I season the fuck out of my food. I'm like, this tastes good. Like even if I do eat chicken, broccoli, and rice, it tastes good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you follow? Did you ever follow any fad diets? Um. I think. I think I did for two weeks. I did keto, but for, Mm -hmm. I did like a photo shoot by myself. Yeah. So I tried to do like a peak week, like how Uh fucking bodybuilders do. Uh huh. Um, And it didn't work at all, but yeah. yeah, (laughs) How did did that go? Oh man, the weight loss. I can see why people um, get addicted to it, man. Cause you're not eating any carbs. So you're going to stop retaining a lot of water. Mm -hmm. I lost like 10 pounds in a week just from water. It's absolutely crazy. I can mm-hmm. see how people, expect, I was only like 160 when I did it too, or like 150 when I did it. But mm-hmm. I could see why people who are like 200 plus, they, might, they could probably lose like what, 15, 20 pounds in maybe one or two weeks, but half of that or like 90% of that is water. Mm-hmm. I can definitely see how people get hooked on that and think that that is the way. Mm-hmm. Do you, I, I'm sure you have, but do you, have you experienced with any clients um, who like get obsessed with the scale weight? Yeah, I have this one client. Uh, Rita I'll say her name I'm sure mm-hmm. she won't care yeah. if she even listens right but she was so obsessed with the scale man um and she actually never got over it even after like as many conversations as we had about it she never got we worked together for 10 months and she never got over her scale obsession if the scale didn't go down for a week she was devastated she would stay on track but she would express in her check-ins how devastated she was she would text me and as many times as I told her, like the scale will go down if you stay consistent every single week, it's not going to go down every week, but it, it will go down in the long term and you will lose fat. And didn't matter how many times I'd help her through it. She just never got over it. Mm-hmm. It's rough. Some people, you can't help everyone, but mm-hmm. she still lost a shit ton of weight, but she just had a terrible mindset around the scale. Mm-hmm. What's like your go-to like solutions for that, for anyone who's like struggling with at like, first I go into the, into their, I keep all their weights in a spreadsheet. And then I take like their weekly averages. At mm-hmm. first I go in there and I show them, I'm like, are you looking at the same fucking page I'm looking at? Like you mm-hmm. lost over 1.5 pounds on average, not just comparing two weight ins on average last week to this week. And you're saying you're not losing weight fast enough or that the mm-hmm. scale is not going down fast enough. This is amazing progress and you should be proud of yourself. So I, I start with that. And usually they're like, holy shit. Yeah, you're right. And then Mm -hmm. if it's, if they still say like, I don't know, it could be going faster. Then I take it from like, do you want this to be like a long style, long-term lifestyle change? Like, do you want this to be sustainable or do you want this to be like the things you did in the past before working with me where you would just like restrict binge or if they were doing that, or if they're doing fad diets or if they're just trying to eat super clean. And usually then they'll say, uh, yeah, I I do want to do sustainable. And actually now in my nutrition questionnaire, I have them choose uh, as advice from Mike Vacanti and Jordan, whether they'd like fast results or uh, sustainable results. Mm-hmm. And then a lot of people still choose fast results. So it's kind yeah. of scary. But, um, <laughs> mm-hmm. what, do you, what do you say to those people? Nothing until, I mean, I haven't had to say anything yet, but because I can understand that. But usually people who say that, I do the um, Jordan's, um, a lot of my tips are from Jordan, but Jordan's mm-hmm. an amazing personal trainer, proven results yeah. for decades. So um i people who choose fast results i do that uh calorie cycling method that he uses which is like the um mm-hmm. severe deficit week one and then uh sustainable deficit weeks three through four and then repeat that every month so mm-hmm. that they get super motivated by those fast results in week one and then um we taper it off and do more sustainable weeks three through four but that's actually not true because every client that i start with i start them off for maintenance at for one or two weeks first just mm-hmm. so i can find their actual uh, maintenance calories. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. And then what would you say to people who, um, who are just starting on their fitness journey, 
who have no experience tracking calories, like how would they even go about that? That's a great question. Um, I'd say buy food scale, download my fitness pal, mm -hmm. get, get your calories from anywhere. doesn't matter. Like go use a fucking, any calculator online, do a mm -hmm. body weight multiplier, whatever it is, just choose one, stick with it. Mm -hmm. And then track, track your calories every day, eating whatever the fuck you want for one or two weeks and learn or, or be super strict with it or be super flexible with it. Just do anything. Just start is my mm -hmm. biggest advice with a food scale in my fitness pal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I like that. Like just start because um, yeah. uh, this term actually came from Paul Carter. Like a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll go around looking for information constantly yeah. And like, I've had some clients come to me, they're like, you know, I'm just sick and tired of listening to podcasts and reading articles and like consuming all this content. I just, yeah, it's like, I feel like I know exactly what to do, but I just don't do it. And it, yeah, the, the term Carl Carter uses mental masturbation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah. And so a lot of people get into this like mindset of just like literally just always trying to look for the best thing or always hopping on pro this program, and yeah. that program. And they don't actually start, which I think. Once you start, then you'll start learning about like what's best for your body and for, you know, your routine and everything. And then that's how you actually get better. And that's how you actually find the best routine for you. Exactly. Exactly what you said for you. There's mm -hmm. so many people like even for us, it's easy sometimes to be like, oh, it's this optimal, what or not, whether or not. But like what you have to realize, too, if, you, if you're a beginner doing anything, you're going to get results with a calorie deficit or training by doing just literally fucking anything. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, it's exactly what you said. Mental masturbation, Paul Carter. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about the holidays. Uh, what, what are you like, what are your plans for your clients like during the holidays for, and what would you say to someone who's like trying to pursue this fitness thing during the holidays? So, so I leave it up to them with every single one. It doesn't matter. I tell them like, if you want to be on track, awesome, let's do it. We'll do like three meals, uh, two snacks on the holiday days and we'll try to keep you under under your maintenance calories because if they want to stay on track i'm not going to tell them uh they don't have to right i'm not going to force them to eat at maintenance or in surplus mm -hmm. but then i also let them know that you have the option to just use those days to eat whatever you want as long as as long as you're not eating until you're absolutely sick you have to lay down on the couch and unbutton your pants and stuff if you're doing mm -hmm. that obviously you're binging and it's not healthy but i say even if you do that that's not the end of the world let's just get back on track the next day Mm -hmm. So I ultimately I leave it up to them, but yeah, everybody has been pretty good during these uh, holidays for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Um. What about the the New Year's? Do you have anything for the people who are waiting for New Year's or, yeah, like tips? Yeah. Tips for New Year's. Uh, join the Shred Shed community on January tenth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Join the Shred Shed. What What is the Shred Shed? It's going to be uh, kind of like Jordan's inner circle uh, group training community where I'll have um, a membership site. Uh, I'm using this membership site called Kajabi mm -hmm. where um, there's going to be a bunch of video courses on nutrition, training, tracking, adjusting, coaching yourself, um, some bonus videos, some FAQ videos, and then literally years worth of training programs, um, over 20 recipes, uh, grocery list. And then what else is in there? I'm probably forgetting some stuff, but then also Facebook community with weekly lives, uh, month 30 to 30 to 90 day challenges with uh, money to the winners, or I haven't decided on the prizes. Actually, I was going to wait till I opened it up and let them decide because mm -hmm. I kind of feel like a, a massage. If I paid for someone to get a professional massage wherever mm -hmm. they live, that'd be a good prize, but either way, I'll let them mm -hmm. decide what the prizes are. Okay. That sounds awesome. Uh, yeah let, let's talk about let's actually kind of talk about the, the your recipes i've seen some of your videos what is your like favorite recipe um my favorite recipe my favorite recipe right now honestly is just greek yogurt here i'll get it oh no wait this is a podcast yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> the fucking i'm looking at it right now it's right there it's a uh, what's it called like a 650 gram or 850 gram container of greek yogurt zero percent fat free or zero percent fat right that's not even a recipe it's not even a meal but like you can just eat the whole thing 70 grams of protein 600 calories or mm -hmm. 650 calories super high uh super filling and obviously healthy as well 
But mm-hmm. man, my whole outlook on the recipes that I do on YouTube is literally simplicity and ease because so mm-hmm. there's so many people out there that make beautiful recipes. They're awesome chefs, awesome cooks. I'm not that. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm, I'm a shit chef. If you ever see my tacos, it's literally ground beef on carb balance wraps with American cheese slice on top. That's uh-huh. my top. <laughs> so it's just mm-hmm. ease for people hitting their calories. They're pretty mm-hmm. voluminous, high protein. That's my uh, strategy behind all those recipes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I love that, like keeping it simple because like yeah. we don't need to overcomplicate this thing any more than it already is. And like for the like average person, like you and I included, like we don't have time to make all these elaborate meals 24 seven all the time with like 20 different spices <laughs> absolutely not mm-hmm. I, and i actually just found out like um how many vegetables are microwavable like you can buy so many vegetables that are microwavable love that mm-hmm. love doing that now never used to do that mm-hmm. i yeah. not eat vegetables <laughs> yeah personally yeah personally for me I, I buy a bunch of like frozen stuff so yeah. like, i literally just throw it in a pan and it like defrost and it cooks up really fast yeah it's frozen so, really prepared. so good too mm-hmm. yeah so uh we'll kind of rewind a little bit what would you say to anyone struggling with their protein intake Oof, definitely start taking protein supplements man i mean they're out there super cheap they're like a dollar to 1.5 dollars per scoop start having one or two of those per day or um you could do some more traditional things like if you don't want to use supplements just double whatever you're eating right now of your current protein sources i I think just doing those two things or if you're a snacker man buy beef jerky cottage cheese fat-free cheese sticks um what what, like greek yogurt cups those are Mm -hmm. good too but those are for snackers i mean i'm not a snacker Mm -hmm. are you a snacker not really like ever since I like started having more satiating meals. I didn't really feel the need to snack. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you a snacky person? Oh yeah. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. I'll have like maybe one snack, but like if it's going to be like a protein shake or like beef jerky while I'm watching Netflix at night, something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, yeah. One of the things like I find with people who struggle with getting in their protein, they don't really plan their meals around protein. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that, that's honestly the biggest thing. Just like making your meals more protein forward. A lot of people make very, uh, or like eat very carb dense meals all throughout the day without really knowing that, mm-hmm. right? Absolutely. Yeah. Education is huge about part of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, honestly, I've been trying to get to the bottom of that. Like, I don't know why people are having such like huge carb based meals. My theory is that you remember that food pyramids. I don't know if it's still a thing in schools now, but that food period in like school growing up kind of yeah with like your your bread and your like your carbs and your grains at the bottom and then it moves oh, yeah. into like vegetables and like dairy yeah, yeah, or something yeah. and then meat is like almost at the top i remember there's a cow in that shit yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and i i that's my theory i think that's probably the problem why people like only eat carbs dude yeah they should definitely teach about calories and protein in school mm-hmm. that'd be awesome yeah mm-hmm um all right well i mean that's all the questions i have for you today let's go awesome yeah so uh we'll yeah we'll start wrapping up this podcast uh so let's end with where can people find you for those who don't know you you can find me uh at um onlyfans.com slash (laughs) calorie dickasit nah you can find me on youtube just search ted shreds and then you can find all my other platforms through any description in any video Mm-hmm. awesome and then yeah do you have anything else to plug um no i think that's it all right yeah um anything other than like the the shred shed community oh yeah uh look into the shred shed community on january 10th if you're interested um besides that merry christmas happy new year's hope everybody achieve their goals write down at least resolu- one resolution um and get after it get after it create an action plan mm-hmm yeah awesome yeah and as we both said in this podcast just start and yeah. stay consistent no more mentally masturbating only yeah. physical. <laughs> all right yeah well thanks for coming on ted and it's an honor to be here man yeah all right i'll talk to you soon all right bye-bye 
All right, and that about wraps up for this episode of the podcast. Thank you so much for listening. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. Uh, be sure to like the video on YouTube or leave a five-star review if you're listening in the Apple Podcasts. It definitely helps the podcast get more listeners and boosts the rankings and all that. Um, and it also uh, helps more people know that this is a podcast with good information. So if this has helped you, um, please help this podcast out and help it reach more people. But thank you so much for listening, and I will catch you in the next one.